Welcome everybody on this Monday afternoon to our class on crocheting hats. My name is Claire. I'll be hanging out in the chat with you. Darren is your actual instructor there on screen showing off all of his beautiful hats. They're going to keep him nice and warm during this winter season. Uh, if you didn't get any of the handouts, I'll be putting them in the chat as we come to each class so you can see those and save them for future use so you can get working on all these hats. Maybe you still need some gift making to do. No judgment. I'm not done either, <laughs> but these will get you. They're all super bulky yarn, so they'll be nice and fast. Um, now that all of that is out of the way, we will let Darren go ahead and get started. All right. Welcome to class. Um, Claire's exactly right. Once you learn how to make these hats, um, they work up very fast um, with super bulky yarn and with uh, a nine or maybe even you go up to a 10 millimeter hook. They, they work up very, very fast. So um, you could easily make several hats between now and the holiday season. Um, it's the perfect gift because everybody wears hats. Uh, it's cold. Everybody needs a hat. Um, I lose my hats all the time. So hopefully nobody loses their hats. But you know, you always need a replacement. So hats make great gifts. Um, once you learn how to make these hats, it'll uh, set you on the road to making other items. Um, these are all for beginners. Um, but you know, once you acquire these skills, then you can apply these skills to other projects. So um, you know, it's a really good opportunity. So let's go ahead and switch to the view of my hands, and we will start um, with class. Um, the first hat that I'm going to review. Um, this is a free pattern. Um, it should have been available with your um, email when you signed up for the class. Um, it's a beginner project. Um, the circumference of the hat is as desired. So this one's one you can make as a custom fit. So you could make this one for a child or you could make this one for an adult um, and you're just really following the same pattern. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, you need one ball, Oh, you need two balls of yarn, um, San Diego Navy and Hometown. That's um, a good option. Another option that you could use, um, this hat is made in the Navy. And then this um, sample that I'm gonna be working in today is made, Claire, do you know the name of this color? I don't remember the name of this purple. Is it Port Plymouth? No. Uh, it might Portland. be a color we don't make anymore, actually. Oh, is it? Okay, well, don't look at this color, but look at the Navy. Um, and if you wanted to use a different yarn, you could use Wool Ease Thick and Quick, um, which is available on michaels.com or lionbrand.com, um, along with the hometown, which is also available on michaels.com and lionbrand.com. They come in a lot of great colors. Um, they, it is a, six, a number six yarn, which is a super bulky, and it's recommending a crochet hook size N13. Um, so that's what we're going to be using in class today. So any super bulky yarn is um, going to work. Make sure you have enough yards. Um, I really like this wool ease because it has the 20% wool. And this hometown is, I really like this one as well. Um, it's 100% acrylic. So if you're allergic to wool, then, you know, it'll be better. So just depending on what your needs are, but both of these yarns are great choices. Um, they come in a lot of really um, good, interesting colors too, like a lot. So um, other than that, you don't need much for this hat. Um, the crochet hook size nine, and then large eyed blunt needles for weaving in your ends. Um, if you want to add a pom pom, you could put a pom pom maker. It's always nice to have a, um, a measuring tape, especially if you're going to be making this more of a custom fit. Um, you might want a measuring tape. So uh, we're not gonna worry about gauge for this project, beginner projects, it's not such a big deal. Um, the hat is worked back and forth in rows to make a rectangle. So this is just crocheting flat, so it's nothing new. Um, we're not gonna worry about gauge. Um, the circumference of the hat is made to your particular head size. So that's really good. Um, note that if you wear a large size, you may additional need additional yarn. So probably not, two balls of yarn should be plenty, but I always wanna have extra yarn. Um, the sides of the rectangle are sewn together and then the top of the hat is um, closed. And then a pom-pom is optional. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by chaining 25. We're gonna single crochet in the second chain from the hook 
and in each chain, and we'll end up with 24 single crochets. I'm gonna review how to do this in a few minutes. Um, chain one turn and single crochet in each stitch of the row to the end. Now, here's what you wanna think about. You're gonna repeat row two until the piece measures slightly stretched. When it's slightly stretched, it should fit comfortably around your head or it should fit comfortably around whomever's head you're making it for. So um, when you're making it, you're gonna be crocheting, you know, you crochet your 25, and then you're gonna have your 24 stitches you're working with, a long ways, or the height of the hat, and then you're gonna be working this direction. So if you're making it for yourself, you can take it, you can lift it up and wrap it around your head, and when it fits around your head, but it should be a little snug because you, you want your hat to stay in place, then that's all you have to go. You don't have to go any farther. Um, if you're making it for a child, you might want it to be a little smaller. You can either measure their head um, or you can wrap it around their head and see. Um, this hat, if it were when it's finished, is going to be about 18 inches. Most adults heads are between like 19 and 22 inches. You'd be surprised, there's a lot of variance. Children's heads aren't that much smaller really, but you might wanna make a children's hat maybe 16 inches, maybe 15. So measure your child's head and what would you say, Claire? Make the hat about an inch smaller? Um, yeah, maybe half an inch because it's such bulky yarn. Yeah, so maybe a half an inch to an inch smaller. Um, and then that way this hat can fit anyone. And if you know somebody that has a large head or has very, very thick hair, then you could make it 20 inches or 22 inches, whatever is needed. So um, that's what makes this hat really fun because you can make it to suit anybody and um, it can fit everybody on your list. Um, any questions about measuring it or how this hat is? Well, I'm gonna show you how to seam the hat and close up the top. Um, but any questions about how to measure the hat or decide how big to make it? Yeah, we do have a question. Um, Alana wants to know where on your head do you measure? Like, is it above your ears, over your ears? I always measure um, like kind of like right across my eyebrows, um, maybe around the top of my ear, because usually it fits around the top of your, what, what, what would you do, Claire? Yeah, what I'd would... say probably about in that same spot, like sort of right above my eyebrows. That's usually the widest part of your head. Yeah, so do the widest part of your head. Um, that's probably pretty good. And they're stretchy. So that's the good thing about beginning projects like this. Um, it's stretchy. So if you make it a little too small, it's going to stretch to fit your head. If you make it a little, just a little too big, it's probably still going to be fine. So um, any other questions? Take this aside for a minute. I think we're good to continue. Okay. So I'm not sure what the skill level is of everybody in the class. Would you like me to demonstrate um, how to do a slip knot and how to do single crochet? Um, I could do that. Um, let me do a slip knot. So when I do a slip knot um, in crochet, it's nice if the slip knot, if the size of the slip knot is controlled by the tail. So the way I tie a knot to make it like that is, um, I call it short over long. So I've got my ball of yarn, I've got my working yarn, and then you do wanna save a tail that's about six inches um, for finishing at the end. So you do wanna make sure you save a tail. So lay it out in a circle like this with the tail on top of your working yarn. Put your hand in the center of the circle and reach under. And then you're going to grab onto that tail with one hand. And the other hand, you're going to grab the tail and hold it with your working yarn. And then at the all you're going to do is then loop that tail back through. And you'll create this loop. And you can see if I pull the tail, that's what controls the size of the loop. And for crochet, that's um, preferable. It's more, it's, it's a little bit better in most projects. So the, my tail is really long, so you wouldn't want to necessarily tail that long, but you do want to make sure it's about six to eight inches. Um, it makes it easier for finishing. Okay. So short over long, put the tail, the short piece over the working yarn, reach under, 
grab hold of the tail. And this is important. You want to make sure you're holding the working yarn and the tail together. And then just loop that under and just pull it through. Okay. Any questions about that? And if you know a different way of tying a slip knot, then it's probably fine. Um, there might be, there could be hundreds of ways of tying slip knots. So if you do it a different way, that's fine. But think about in crochet, it is best if the tail controls the size of the knot, or I'm sorry, of the loop. And then you just pop your hook on there and cinch it up loosely around that. And now we're ready to start chaining. Um, and then to chain, you are just gonna kind of, you wanna put a little pressure under your slip knot and kind of give yourself a little tension. And then you're just gonna, you're gonna scoop up some working yarn and then you're gonna pull it back through your loop. And when you pull it back through your loop, you wanna turn your crochet hook down so it can pass through the loop. See if you do it like that, obviously it's not gonna work. So turn it down, pull it through. So this is a basic crochet chain. Okay. Any questions before I move on, on how to do the chain or how to do the slip? I was pretty, you know, it's pretty beginner, but I just wanna make sure I don't know if we have any beginners in class. So any questions, Claire? Nope, we're good to move on. Okay, perfect. Um, We did the slip knot, we did the chain. So a single crochet. So whenever you're doing a single crochet, um, you wanna skip your first chain. Remember that the loop on your hook doesn't, we don't count that as chain. That's our kind of our working loop. Um, we skip the first chain for single crochet. We enter the second chain, wrap your yarn, bring it through, wrap your yarn again, and pull it through both. And that is single crochet. So we're gonna enter the chain, wrap the yarn. And when you pull it through again, you kind of have to turn your hook down so it'll go through the loop and then pull it through both. So you, you hook the yarn and then you, whenever you're pulling it back, just get in the habit of turning it down and that will make it easier to pull through. Okay, and that is sing, single crochet. Any questions about single crochet? Maybe we have a little more of an advanced group today. No questions, Claire? Ah, uh, we did have some, but I answered it correctly. Uh, someone said their uh, chain was turning out shorter, but that would be if you are using a smaller hook and a needle, your beginning chain is going to be a little bit shorter than the, uh, I think we said 19 inches in the pattern. Yes. Um, yeah. Depending on, now remember when you're making this hat, if you chain all of them for the hat, you're working this direction. And this is the length of the height of the hat. So this, this bottom part will kind of go towards your face. And this is the top of the hat. And you'll be working this direction. And as you're working on the hat, you can wrap it around your head to see if it fits or not. Where this line here is more of the height of the hat. So this would be the bottom of the hat, and then this would be the top where we're gonna close it. I don't know if that makes any sense or not, but um, I'll demonstrate in just a few minutes. And then when you're crocheting, you get to the end of your row, you give one chain on the side for chaining up, turn your work, and then just continue on. Um, you might want to count your stitches at the end of each row to make sure you haven't lost a stitch. Um, one thing you can do to help keep your place is um, use stitch markers. Let me grab a couple of stitch markers. So you can put a stitch marker on your first stitch and a stitch marker on your last stitch. And that can really be beneficial especially if you're still learning. Um, even um, I even do this to make sure I don't add or lose a stitch. Um, and then you, you do your first stitch and then you um, move your stitch marker up. So that's my first stitch. 
and you go all the way across. For your next row, all the way across, single crochet. And then when you get to, see now my stitch marker is there, so I know for sure that's my last stitch. And that might sound like a silly thing to say, but um, sometimes this chain up on the side um, can trick you and you can feel like that is a stitch and you might go in there and you might end up adding a stitch and making it a little bigger. So, um, and the stitch markers do help with that. So if you, and then whenever, so now I know for sure this is my, it was my first stitch. Now it's going to be my last stitch. Um, I'm going to make a stitch here for my first. I'm going to put my stitch marker on and then I'll be 100% sure where my stitches start and stop. All right. Do you ever do this, Claire, or do you just live on the dangerous edge? Oh, no. I like stitch markers in my end stitches because otherwise my piece tends to get narrower and narrower. <laughs> or, or wider. So if there's always a risk on the beginning and the end. You might add a stitch or lose a stitch, kind of depending on how you're looking at it. So, you know, do be careful. Um, and I, I recommend the stitch markers. And I also recommend counting every couple of rows just to make sure. Um, and with this hat, if you get off a stitch, if you get one or one too many or a couple too, you know, if you lose a stitch or two, it's probably going to be all right because you can maybe fudge that a little bit in your seam, but you do want to try to maintain that. And this is a good time to practice. Okay. All righty. So you what just you think about the stitch markers though. Um, T wanted, Tina mentioned uh, they weren't sure how you're crocheting around the stitch markers, but you're okay. not going around them. You're taking them out and then moving them up every time. Right? Well, Kind, I kind of am. Let me show you. Let me get over to it. So the stitch marker goes, I'm putting the stitch marker in the exact same place I would put my hook. So the stitch marker is right around that loop. It's going under those two. It's going right under those two um, strands of yarn where you put your hook. And all I, you could, you, once you get here, you could take it out or um, I just, pretend it's not there and just kind of go under it. And it doesn't really interfere with your stitch. And then I take it out and move it up. Does that make sense? Does that help with that question? So you could take it out or you can just work kind of under it. But it's such a small little stitch marker. It's not going to take, see, there's plenty of space in that um, stitch. And then I just kind of go under it. and do my stitch and then move it up. How would you do it, Claire? Would you take it out first or would you? Um, no, I usually leave it in. And then I was going to say, because we're crocheting and we're using like a locking stitch marker or one that's got an opening, even if you accidentally go through the stitch marker, you can still take it out later, which is something you can't do in knitting. You might yeah. accidentally and like. Yeah, when I first it. When I was learning knitting, I knitted a couple stitch markers into my piece and had to cut them out. So that can happen. So once you get to the stitch marker, just kind of go under it. Because if you're not sure, if you really need this, um, if you really depend on this, if you take the stitch marker out and then drop it and have to, you know, maybe you lose your place on your work, um, you know, you, you just want to make sure you know exactly where you're going. All right, so that's single crochet. It's doing the slip knot, the chain, and single crochet, and then also with managing our stitch markers. Um, so that's pretty much all you need to know for this first hat. Um, let me show you how to seam it, and then we'll move on to the next one, um, unless there are any questions. Try not oh, to throw I your think crochet we better keep moving along. Yeah, try not to. I just threw my crochet hook across the room not my favorite part. Okay, so let me show you. I'm going to seam this hat with um, a different color yarn so that you can see what I'm doing. But what you would do is when you're finished crocheting, you would make sure you leave yourself a tail that's long enough to um, finish the hat. This tail might actually be a little short. I would probably do twice as long as the seam just to give myself enough. So just give yourself a very generous tail for finishing. 
but I'm going to, and you can always use a different, if you cut your tail too short, you can always seam it with, um, you don't have to use the tail, but it makes it nice. All right, so for seaming, what you wanna look for, if you were gonna crochet, you would go right under these two, um, right here, under these two strands of yarn, and that's where you would make your stitch. And they're all along this edge. And this is my chain edge. But if you look really careful, you can still see where it kind of looks the same. Um, just go under those two stitches. Or, I'm sorry, there's two strands of yarn. And you can see they're spaced out. You know, one, two, three, four, five. They're all spaced out evenly. And if you go only under two strands of yarn, then um, your stitches will be very nice and neat. So you just want to make sure you're going under two strands of yarn. Um, find a nice corner and go through two strands of yarn. And make sure you're not going deep. Just go right under there where you would make your crochet stitch. And this is a running stitch. Then you go back. So you can see I'm not going very deep. I like to hold my project like this and keep my uh, index finger there. And then that way I'm making sure I'm going where I want to go. I'm not just kind of stabbing it randomly. Um, if my finger's there, I'm finding this stitch and then I'm finding this stitch and I can go across. Now the running stitch, we're kind of zigzagging back and forth. I'm going across and then I'm entering the fabric from this side going and I'm exiting on this side. And over here, I'm entering on this side, and I'm going back. So we're always kind of going zigzag. Now there's something called the whip stitch. Now the whip stitch is just as, it's just as nice. Um, you bring your yarn over your seam and go through, and you're still going through that's kind of where that stitch would be. And then you jump over your seam and you're always entering the fabric from the same side. So pick up two, two strands of yarn right here pick up two here and pull it through. And then bring it back over. So this is the whip stitch or the running stitch. Which one do you like, Claire? Um, I like the running stitch. I think it just looks a little bit better. I do too. I always do the running stitch, but I do know people and I've had people tell me that the whip stitch is better. It gives a better seam. They have all kinds of reasons, but I, I think they're pretty much the same, really, I mean, when you come down to it. But I Question do like- Question while you're seaming this, though. Um, we have a couple questions about, are you seaming it with wrong sides together? And then how do you know which is the wrong side of the fabric? Very good question. So with this fabric, um, this is a reversible fabric, so there really is no wrong side. Um, but with this seam, you would want to seam it with right sides together so that you're putting the seam on the inside. So if there was you know, a right side or a wrong side, you want to make sure that the right side, put right sides together so that the seam, and then you'll turn the head in, it, it'll be inside out and you'll have to fix it, turn it right side out when you're, when you're done. But with this hat, um, with this fabric, there's, there's, it's reversible. So what you might want to do before you seam it is look at it, look at both sides and see, does one side look better than the other? Maybe you made a mistake and it shows up more on one side. Um, just put that on the inside. So that's pretty much it. But this fabric is reversible. Um, another little trick for seaming is um, you might, you probably have um, clips like this for potato chips, um, for closing up bags in your kitchen. Um, I have these clips that are, I think they're for quilting, but they work great for this. Um, knitted and crocheted fabric is very stretchy. And so you might be seaming, going along, having a very nice time. And when you get to the end, one side might end up being longer than the other side. Um, and it wasn't like that when I started, but you've, and you've kind of stretched one side in your hand. So one thing you can do is put a clip, um, you know, get a nice corner and put a clip there. And then just put one in the middle. Usually on something like this, two clips would be enough, but um, that'll help you not to stretch your fabric. And then once you get to each clip, you want to make sure, you know, everything looks nice. If I have a clip there and I get to my clip and it looks like that, then, you know, I, I've done something wrong and I might have to go back. So, but just 
do a couple of stitches and stop and look at it and then keep going. And any any questions about this seam? Uh, one last question on the fabric for the hat. Um, Susan has noticed that their work is turning in a spiral as they crochet. Oh, it's um, kind of rolling up? Yep. That's pretty normal with single crochet. It does tend to roll up a little bit. Um, double check and make sure it's not like too, if it's super tight, that might make it a little bit worse. But after it's finished um, and you seam it and everything, it won't roll up like that. And if, if it does roll up a little bit, you can um, kind of block it out with some steam or a little bit of water. What do, what do you think, Claire? Do you have a lot of problems with that? Um, I don't think I do a lot of single crochet flat for that very reason, so. <laughs> but this is single crochet flat and you can see this one isn't rolling up so much. Um, but I've I've had it laid out flat like this, packed away, and it it kind of gets pressed out flat because it um you know it over time if you press it out flat. So if you lay it down like this and hit it with just a little steam and lay it flat, it should it should be okay. So now once you seam the whole side, we're going to go for the um, closing up the top. Now the top edge, um it it's not as neat as the side edge. Um the top edge is a little bit um. It's a little bit uneven because that was actually the side of our work. Now it's going to be the top. So you just still want to make sure that you're only going um, two stitches deep or two strands of yarn deep. I'm sorry. I'm um, just right along that very edge. And you can see, I'm just kind of, I hope you can see, I'm just kind of going in and out of it. And I'm just going to pull it shut. Are you able to see how I'm doing this? Nothing fancy. I'm just kind of going in and out. You just want to make sure that you don't like randomly go down deeper. Um, I would just keep it right along this edge. Would you keep it right along the edge, Claire? Or would you go a little deeper? Um, yeah, I'd probably keep it right along the edge there so you don't have too much bulk sitting up at the top of your head. Yeah, that's what I think. So you, I, I hope you're able to see what I'm doing. Nothing fancy here, just going in and out, kind of like up and down. Um, I'm just going through the holes that are already there to make it a little bit easier. And then you can go right through your seam. And then when you get back to where you started, um, you can see just by doing that, I've already kind of closed up the top a little bit, but then you just want to pull it um, really tight. And it's kind of like closing the top of like a change purse, or you could, you know, close up the top of a pair of sweatpants like this really tight. Just pull it really tight. And then you do want to kind of tie a little knot at the top to kind of cinch that off. So just kind of go through and maybe just tie a little knot right there, like a square knot. Um, I don't usually recommend knots. I don't really like knots, but that at the top of a hat, I don't mind a little knot. But you're not going to tie a knot and cut your yarn. You're going to tie a little knot there just to keep it um, closed up super tight. And then you're going to weave in your ends um, for a nice, neat finish that will um, look nice and professional and it will stay in place for years to come. And so for weaving in your ends, remember crochet is a three dimensional stitch. So you can kind of bury your ends in the middle of the stitch. You want to kind of go one direction, two to three inches, and maybe the other end, um, other direction, and then get down to the next row below. Oops. And then I like to do it like this. I kind of sometimes just kind of follow these, like kind of strands of yarn like that. And if you're using the same yarn you made the hat with, you're not going to see these at all. See, I just kind of bury it like that. I don't know. How do you do it, Claire? Do you do it like this? Yeah, I think that's a, a pretty good. And with crochet, the stitches are a little thicker, so it's easier to hide it in there. Yeah, make sure you're putting it in the middle of the stitch, not um, see right here. And then if I turn it inside out, you can see my needle still um, kind of secret in there. And that's because I'm going in the middle of the stitch, not kind of under the stitches. And then you'll pull the hat. You'll pull this. Once you go Go two or three inches one direction and then down and then two or three inches back and then pull it tight and snip it off. And then you're done. 
and then you've got your hat. You can wear the hat with a rolled up brim or you can wear it long and slouchy. Um, I think that's all. So any questions about the hat? This I'm going to give one. you a time check that we're already about halfway through class. And I know we have two other hats to cover, so. Okay, um, so this hat's about 12 inches around. And then of course you can make it as big as you need to fit whomever it's for. Yeah, we'll go a little faster for the next ones because we won't have to review the stitches or anything. All right, so this next one is a hat that will give us, um, we can make stripes if we want to. Of course, you wouldn't have to make stripes on this hat, but this hat has a little bit of shaping. So instead of just a rectangle, what we're going to be making is, um, Claire, what's the name of this shape? Um, I don't think this, does this shape have a name? It's not a rectangle, certainly. It's a, I don't know, it's not a parallelogram. Uh, I guess if it had straighter sides, it might be a trapezoid. Maybe, so just whatever, it's kind of shaped. It kind of looks like a beehive, I don't know. So, but you're going to be making a hat, um, a, I'm sorry, a big flat piece of fabric kind of in this kind of odd shape. So let's look at the directions. Um, so you can, this one is using Woolies Thick and Quick. Um, the hat that is pictured here was mustard and grass, but this sample that I'm making is Dallas gray and New York white. And this one is a hometown bonus bundle. So, you know, different options for different people. You might like different things, um, or you can make it a solid color. Again, we need our crochet hook size nine, stitch markers, and large eyed blunt needle. So not a lot of, and a pom-pom is optional. So not a lot of supplies either. Um, this hat has worked in rows. Um, I'm gonna show you how to change the colors. So let's go ahead and try it um, with A. So whatever color you decide is A, you have two colors, A and B, you're gonna chain 37. And that's your setup. Um, that's your that's your chain and then your setup row with a you're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each stitch across you'll have 36 stitches with b you're going to chain one and turn and you're going to single crochet across with b you're going to repeat row two changing to yarn color a in the last stitch with A, chain one, turn, and single crochet across. So you're just gonna be doing that and repeat rows one through four until the hat measures about eight inches from the beginning. So let me show you how to um, make color changes. So I was demonstrating with this yarn. So let's, um, we're gonna cut that. And I'm gonna to switch to this kind of red color. And this is woolly, thick and quick. This is cranberry and this one is spice, very nice colors. So to change colors, to give you a nice, even, clean um, stripe, you enter your stitch. This is, this is my last stitch on the row, enter your stitch. Um, you bring up your loop. So this is my single crochet. To finish the single crochet, I would yarn over and pull it through. But for changing colors, I'm going to use my new color for the last step. So I'm going to yarn over with my new color and then pull it through. And that way I'm getting a nice clean stripe. And then I do my chain one and then I work across. Any questions about how, how to change colors? Okay, I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to go all the way across just so I can get back and change my color one more time to demonstrate. So you're working along. You're having a very nice time. Everything looks beautiful. And I'm gonna change color. So I started my single crochet. I'm right there before. I'm going to do my last step of that single crochet with the new color and then move forward okay any questions 
I shouldn't have cut this yarn. I wish I wouldn't have cut my yarn. So I'm going to rejoin it. Pretend I didn't cut the yarn because what we're going to do is we're going to carry that yarn up the side because you don't want to have a thousand ends to weave in. So. so are you able to see how I'm changing color? Are there any questions on that? Yeah, you would never do this if you're making a real project. Never tie a knot like that. So you said you cut your color and you wish you wouldn't have. Should you leave both colors attached then? Yes, leave both colors attached. Um, I wasn't, I was just demonstrating changing colors. I wasn't thinking um, ahead because we have to carry the um, color up the side. So I'm going to finish my last single crochet. So here's my last single crochet. Um, enter the stitch, bring up a loop. And I'm going to take my orange. This is my orange working yarn. And it's, I'm just going to carry it up the side. And um going to bring it through like that, chain one, and then turn my work and continue going. Now, the reason we want to do that is if we cut our yarn every time, you can see here along the edge that I'm carrying my yarn up the side. If you cut it every time, then you'll have to weave in ends for each stripe, and that's not going to make anyone happy. I really can't imagine anyone choosing that life. Can you, Claire? Could you choose that life? No, I would not. <laughs> no. So um, yeah, make sure you don't cut your yarn and just carry it up the side. You want to make sure you're giving yourself enough slack so that it's not um, pulling your, you don't want it to pull it tight. Now, if you don't change your colors the correct way that I'm showing you, um, you're going to get an uneven um, color change right here. So like this white would end up going up into this gray a little bit. But that's not such a big deal on a project like this because we're going to lose that in the seam anyway. So if you've never changed colors before, this is a good opportunity to practice changing colors because if you do it wrong or if you're not sure what you're doing, it doesn't matter because you're going to hide it in the seam. Um, if you're making a scarf or a project that the edge is not going to be hidden, you do want to make sure you're doing it 100% correct. So this is a great opportunity to practice because the stakes are very low, okay? So any questions about how to change colors correctly or any questions about carrying your yarn up the side? Doing okay, would that make sense? And in this hat, we can carry the yarn up the side because these are just two row stripes, right? If you wanted to modify the pattern and do like chunkier stripes, how big do you think you could make those? Honestly, for a hat like this, I think you could carry your yarn up the side quite a ways if you wanted to, um, because it's going to be hidden in the seam. Now, if I was making a scarf, I would only carry it up probably two rows because that's unless if you're going to put a border on it. But because you're um, you're going to seam this and it's going to be hidden in the seam, you know, you could carry it much farther than you think. But you do want to make sure that you're not um, you want to make sure you're giving yourself enough slack so that you're not pulling it tight. What would you think, Claire? Do you think it's OK because of the seam? I think it is. I am probably a little bit more of a perfectionist, so I might only carry it up four rows and then cut and weave it in. But like you said, it's going to be hidden inside, so technically it's fine. <clears throat> you're, yeah, you're actually probably more correct, but I kind of like to test my limits. So, but yeah. Depends on how on. much of a deadline you're on. <laughs> yes. Um, but also, but like on a scarf where this edge is going to be, be seen, I wouldn't do it any more than two, maybe Three, I don't know. Would you do three? How much would you do on a scarf where the edge is going to be seen? Oh, just two rows. Yeah, I think two is the, all, the, all you could really push it. All right. So once you get to the top of this hat, you are going to have to place, um, your, well, you don't have to use stitch markers, but I do recommend it. Um, in the next section, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to continue to work in single crochet and in the same striping pattern but we're also gonna decrease the number of stitches to shape the top of the hat. An easy way to do this is to decrease, an easy way to do your decreases is to place stitch markers. So as you continue working, you'll decrease by working crochet two together. 
Um, the stitch markers will keep track of where you're doing this. So that way you won't lose track. Um, don't forget to move your stitch markers up on each row so that you keep them in the same place. Okay. Um, so let me show you how to crochet, um, single crochet two together. That will be our next little thing we're going to learn. Okay, I think we're going to rip this out. Give me a little bit more to work with. Okay. So crochet two together. It's very easy. And this is a decrease. So this takes um, two stitches and turns them into one stitch. So we're going to lose a stitch. Um, we're going down to our stitch count. So you enter the stitch and bring up a loop. And if I were going to finish my single crochet, I would yarn over and pull it through both. But I'm going to crochet two together. So you enter the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull it through all three. And then I'm going to finish. Well, I think I have two there. So I'm going to do it again. So you know, I'm going to enter the stitch, bring up a loop. And then I'm going to enter the next stitch, which is the last one on this little swatch. Yarn over, bring up a loop, yarn over, and pull it through all three. Okay. Um, has anyone done a double or single crochet two together before? Um, any questions about that? So enter the stitch, bring up a loop, enter this next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, and pull it together. And you can see pretty quickly it starts to you know take a new shape. And you can see pretty quickly it starts to to take up a new shape. Right? Any questions about that? I think we're good. I think I recognize a couple names from our uh, crochet classes in the past. So hopefully people have been practicing. <laughs> hopefully so. Um, if, if once you start making the hat, if you do have questions, you could look at our um, crochets one, two, and three classes. They're recorded and available online. So that's always an option. If you don't remember how to do certain stitches. It's, it's, you know, I can't speak to everybody, so it's hard to know what skill level everybody's on. But just remember, work where you are, um, and there's always more to learn, and just keep practicing. That's the main thing. All right, so for seaming this hat, it's the same as the other one. I'm just going to demonstrate quickly. Because with this seam, we're seaming the side. Um, so you don't have such a nice um, place to go in as we did on the other hat. So you just want to put my clips on this time. So I would, if it were me, um, I'm not usually real fussy, but for something like this, I would want my stripes to line up perfectly. Claire, you would, I know you would. Well, yeah, and that's an easy way to make sure that you're staying on track. If your little stripes line up, then everything's good. And that it looks much nicer too. So I would probably use a couple of clips um, and not, not to even just keep everything the end, but to keep each stripe um, kind of lining up nice. And it'll look much, much nicer. And so just kind of get a nice corner. Just remember, don't go too deep. Just try to go two strands of yarn deep. And then, and keep your stitches, try to keep them spaced out the same. And then you just kind of seam this with, a, and then whenever you kind of start a new stripe, you just kind of want to guide that with your fingers and make sure don't, I wouldn't do this while I'm watching TV. I would probably want to focus on this one a little bit uh, more carefully. And then. And I, you could do the running stitch or the whip stitch, or if you know a different one, that's probably fine too. But I would just kind of make sure that my stripes. Any questions about seaming um, or about anything we've talked about? So 
and you can kind of check to see how it's looking on the inside. Um, definitely use the same yarn you made your project with. Don't use bright red, um, but you can see the stripes are lining up pretty nice, and I'm I'm pretty happy with that. So, I mean, you can fuss over it a little bit more if you want to, but that would I would be that would be suitable for me. I'm not extremely fussy. So, any questions about this hat? One question on that seam, um, as you're going, how tight are you pulling that yarn? Are you really like yanking at it a lot or? Not tight. Um, <clears throat> in fact, as you, you know, you, you don't want it to be slack, um, but you don't want it to be tight. So if you pull it too tight, um, it can cause your hat to bunch up. Um, you could actually achieve a nice ruching, a nice look if you did that, um, depending on if that's what you want or not. But what I would recommend doing is do a couple of inches of your seam and then just kind of massage it out a little bit. See how I'm just kind of pulling it, massage it out. Um, you want it to, I don't know what the right word is. You don't want it to be tight, but you don't want it to be slack. So just, you want it to, I would just kind of pull it like that to make sure I'm not getting it too tight. But one thing I will caution, you don't want to use this. This is one of the floats we carried up. Make sure you're not using this to sew into. Um, make sure you're actually going into the body of the hat. And then do a couple of stitches. And I'm not pulling, I'm just kind of pulling it so that it's, I, as soon as the, um, the loop kind of disappears, I'm stopping, stopping pulling it. And then, is there a way to describe that, Claire? How would you say it? I was thinking that it's a little bit like, um, what is that, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, where it's got to be just right. <laughs> and if it's, if it's a little too tight or a little too loose, I think you could get away with it. But I always, do you do it like this? Do you kind of massage it out a little bit? Yeah, I'll give it a tug once in a while. I, I think that. that it's better for it to be a little bit too loose than too tight. Yeah, so, but you know, if, if when you do it, if you end up pulling it too tight or you don't pull it tight enough, you can take it out and try it again because knitted and crocheted fabric are very forgiving. So you're not going to ruin your hat by doing that. And then you'll just close up the top the same way we did the other one. Only you only have a few stitches. And then you can use a pom-pom if you like, or you don't have to. Any questions? I'd say we better get to our third hat before you run out of time here and daylight okay. on the East Coast. <laughs> it's dark outside right here. It's pretty dark. Okay, so this hat is made a little differently. Um, this one has this nice um, kind of crocheted ribbing. It almost looks like a knitted ribbing along the edge. And we're approaching this hat uh, from a little different direction. So let's look at the direction. Um, again, this is um, a free pattern. You should have had it along with your um, class information. That gives the size of the hat, the materials again, same as we've been working with. Pom poms are optional. We're not going to worry about gauge for this project. The hat is worked in one piece in the round. So that's the first thing that's different. Um, the hat band is worked first, flat, and then joined to make a ring. So that sounds weird. Let's see what that's about. Um, stitches for the body of the hat are worked along the edge of the band and then worked in continuous rounds at the top of the hat. So that sounds interesting. Um, the top of the hat is shaped with decreases. So we know how to do decreases. We just did them in the other hat. I'm not worrying about gauge, the pom-pom is optional. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is chain 10. And then we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across having nine stitches, nine single crochet to chain one in turn, working through the back loops only. So that's weird. Let's look at that. Um, we're going to single crochet in each stitch across, repeat rows two until the band measures about 18 inches from the beginning. So here's another opportunity. So until the hat measures 18 inches, if you have somebody that has a very large head, maybe you wanna go 20 inches. If you have somebody, like maybe you're making it for a child, you might only wanna go 16 inches. So you could do a little experimenting here. Um, and then we're gonna fold the band in half. Um, we're gonna bring the first row to meet the last. Oh, that sounds very confusing. Let's just see what we're doing. Let's just jump right in. 
So first, so this is what we're gonna end up making. We're gonna end up making kind of this little strip, but first I wanna show you how to crochet in the back loop. It's actually very easy. I'm gonna root this orange back so you can kind of, I'm gonna do my demonstrating in orange so you can kind of see exactly what I'm doing. So normally, and if you can't see, please let me know. Um, normally when you work on a crochet stitch, you look for this top of your work and you see these two strands of yarn. So these are the loops. You Maybe you didn't even realize it, but you do have a front loop, which is the one closest to you, and there's a back loop. So let me put my crochet hook through there so you can see. So usually that's where you work. Um, this is my back loop and this is my front loop, okay? So for this project, we're gonna work through the back loop only. So instead of going here, I'm gonna go on top of my um, edge and I'm gonna split those loops and I'm just gonna go through the back one. So I'm gonna find this V on the top and I'm gonna split them and I'm just gonna go through the back one. And there's another stitch where you just go through the front one where you would kind of split them this direction. But that's not this project. I just want you to kind of know you can do it that way as well. But we're just working in the back of the loop. Has anyone done this before? It's not hard. It's the same um, exact same stitch. You're just entering a different place. You're just going through the top. So are you able to see? Oops, let me make sure you actually do the stitch. And you just wanna go through that back loop. And this will create a new texture. So just by um, not even doing a new stitch, but just by entering the loop in a different place, you create this new texture. And you can see here, you create kind of this raised kind of ridge, like this edge. And that's what's creating our ribbing right here. So any questions about that? Were you guys able to see what I was doing? Don't see it again. Are we ready to move forward? We've got just under 10 minutes left here in class. So I think we've probably got more stuff to cover before we end. Yeah, we do some fun things. <laughs> All right, so this is pretty fun and pretty easy to do. And it's fun because it creates this new texture. Now, maybe you've never done that before. So it is nice to learn new things, new stitches, new textures. And then once it gets as long as you want, you know, maybe you're making it a little bigger, maybe you're making it a little smaller, then, let me see. So you want to, um, we're gonna join this. So what um, the directions were telling us, you wanna make sure you're lining it up nice and even. You can put a clip there if you want, but usually for a short piece like this, I might not. And then you're just gonna slip stitch this together. So this is kind of another seam. You could seam it or you can slip stitch it, but if you seam it, then you're gonna have more ends to weave in. And that's never my favorite part. I don't hate it, but so you can see, can you see where I'm going and then slip stitch it together. So I'm going through this piece of fabric, just two strands of yarn deep. And then I'm going through this piece of fabric. I'm gonna yarn over pull it through both and just pull it through there. So that's a slip stitch. You could do a single crochet if you wanted, but that's gonna give you more of a bulk, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. So, but a slip stitch will give you a less bulky. So the difference between a slip stitch is I'm just going here. So a slip stitch, and instead of yarning over and pulling it through two, I'm just pulling this one through one. The slip stitch will give you a little bit nicer of an edge, I think, a little less bulky of a seam. Any questions on how to do this? The directions made it sound very confusing, but it's actually, that's all it is. And because we have this different texture, it's kind of blends in, so it's gonna be fine, okay? Is this? And around, yeah. Okay. So now the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting the body of the hat. 
the body of the hat is worked in joined rounds. So we're not going to turn our work. We're going to keep going round and round and round and round. So we're going to chain one. We're going to work 40 single crochet evenly spaced around the edge of the band. Join with a slip stitch at the first crochet or single crochet. Place a stitch marker so you know where you, your round ends. And we're going to move the stitch marker up as we come to it and finish each round. Chain one, single crochet in the cro single crochet around, join with a slip stitch at first single crochet. Um, we're going to repeat rounds two until the hat measures seven and a half inches. Okay. So if you did make your hat a little bigger or a little smaller, you might not do 40 stitches. Maybe you'll do 35, maybe you'll do 45. Um, that might be something you're going to have to experiment with because if you do that, now you have become a, knit, uh, a crochet designer. So you're kind of designing, you're redesigning this hat and kind of making your own design. So congratulations, you are now a crochet knitwear designer. And so you might have a little bit of experimenting. But if you follow the pattern correctly, or the way it's said, um, we're going to do 40. And one thing I like to do, um, because counting 40 stitches all the way around, you might not get them all even. So I'll put a stitch marker. So now I only have to do 20 and then 20. So that's easy to keep track of. And then I'll do a stitch marker here. See, I'm not counting or measuring. I'm just kind of doing this to, because um, I'm not going to fuss over it too much. So I have to do 10, 10, 10, 10. And that's easy to keep track of. Um, you don't want to get all the way around the hat, get to here and realize, gosh, I'm only at 30. I have to squeeze 10 stitches there or get to here and be like, now I'm at 40 and I have that far to go. So this way will kind of help keep you balanced. And if you ended up with like 42 or 38, I bet nobody would ever know. That's it's going to be our little secret. Claire won't tell anyone. So we're going to chain one. And then like right here, like I wouldn't, I would want to make sure I'm picking up two strands of yarn. So if you have a spot like this where it, it's a nice place to crochet into, but there's only one strand of yarn, um, make sure you are picking up two. So kind of go and look for that other one, because that will give you a nicer edge um, to work into. Like you don't want, you don't want it to be weak. So, and then you can kind of figure out, let me see, there's one, two, three, four, five. I bet we could do one on the top and one in the middle. So we could go, um, see it kind of goes up and then down. So this is the mountain, the valley, the mountain, the valley. We could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll try to squeeze them all in. So we already did one. So there's two, do one on top, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. Going a little deep there. I might want to rethink that one. I don't want to guess one strand though. So nine, ten. So that worked out. I did ten. Okay. Any questions about how to uh, work into that edge? Um, joining the seam and then working across the edge. Any questions at all? I know we're technically at the end of time now. So if anybody has to run, just a reminder that we are recording this class. So you'll be able to watch it back on the Michael's YouTube channel in about 24 hours. And I'll go ahead and put the links for all three patterns into the chat as well, in case you need those again. Well, okay, we're almost done. So I, I cheated a little bit. I didn't go all the way around my hat. Pretend I went all the way around. I'm just trying to hurry. I want to demonstrate how to end the round and start the next round. So I'm not counting. I'm not doing a good job. I'm just brushing just so I can demonstrate this last little bit. And then we're almost done. All right. So you want to make sure that you're counting and you're doing these nice and evenly spaced. All right. So here is my end. So this is my seam. 
And this is where I started. That's my first single crochet. So you might want to put a stitch marker marking the first one. And then I'm going to do my last single crochet for that round. Now ending the round, this um, pattern is instructing us to do um, joined rounds. Did it say joined rounds or spiral, Claire? Let me see. Um, the hat is worked in joined rounds. Okay, you can do whatever you want, really. So for joined rounds, you wanna take your first single crochet, you wanna enter that stitch, yarn over, and we're gonna join this with a slip stitch. And then you chain one, and then you go all the way around and make 40 crochets. And then when you come back around, you're gonna do it. I recommend putting a stitch marker there. So when you come all the way back around, you're gonna come here, do a single crochet, join it with a slip stitch, chain one to go up and then keep going. Um, does that make sense? Any questions about that? Or if you don't wanna do that, which you could just make it into a spiral and just keep pushing through and, and going, but then that way it's gonna be a little different. So there are two ways of doing it. Um, and you can choose which way you like the best and um, continue on. Any questions about how to work into the band, space out your stitches, or to do the joined rounds or the spiral? I was going to say, if people need more help with the crocheting in the round, we have done that class in the past. Um, so it's probably buried a little bit down on the Michael's YouTube channel. So we go over that in a lot more detail in that whole class. Um, if you search in YouTube, Michael's um, crocheting in the round, michaels.com and put my name with it, it should bring it up. Because I, I bring up, the, I always rewatch the classes before I teach them. And that's how I find them. So put the name of the crocheting in the round, michaels.com, um, Darren Morris, and it should bring it right up um, if you have any questions, all right? Any, and then all you do for this hat is you continue working. Once you establish your 40 stitches, you keep working until it measures seven and a half inches. And then you shape the top of the hat the same way we did the other one. Um, only you're not gonna be working back and forth. You're still gonna be working in the round. So you add your stitch markers. Every time you come to one, you're going to um, you're going to chain one, um, single crochet in the next eight stitches, place a stitch marker in the last stitch, repeat all the way around. You'll have eight stitch markers placed. And then you're going to chain one for your beginning of your round, single crochet, two stitches before the stitch marker, and then single crochet two together and repeat all the way around, joining with a slip stitch, and you'll have decreased five stitches all the way around, so one in each little section. Um, you're gonna keep decreasing until you have 15 remaining stitches, remove, um, fasten off, um, leaving a larger um, tail, and you're going to use that tail um, onto a blunt needle and you're gonna sew in and out of the crocheted fabric around the top edge of the hat, like we did on the, the striped hat. And you're just gonna pull it, um, pull it tight to gather it together. And then you're gonna weave in all of your ends and then you could add a pom-pom if you like. So um, all of these hats pretty much use the same stitches and the same techniques, um, except the first hat doesn't do any decreases. Um, so they get a little bit, they get progressively slightly more complicated as you do. So you could make the first one very easy, make the second one just a little bit more harder and you could just a little bit harder and you could practice um, changing colors and doing decreases. And then you can make this third one um, where you learn to do crocheting in the back of the loop and then you can practice crocheting in the round. So these are all very, they're designed to kind of help you progress. Um, easiest one to one that's slightly harder and then slightly harder. So you want to learn one more thing on each hat, okay? Um, any questions at all? Any questions at all I can help you with? Happy to demonstrate anything again. Uh, someone did ask about our upcoming classes. So we have just one more left for the year. Um, next Monday, December 12th, we'll be doing this sort of same thing, but for knitted hats. 
So if any of you are also knitters or know some knitters and want to know how to make some quick, fast finish hats for holiday gifts or to stockpile your own winter wardrobe, you can sign up for that. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have some new classes coming up in January and those should be up to sign up for soon. Okay. All right, if you do have any questions, you can contact me on um, Facebook. You can send me a direct message. Just look for my name. It's spelled, um, it's just spelled out and you'll see my picture. Uh, maybe Claire will put my Instagram name in the chat. It's Mr. Wooly Bear. Um, you can send me a direct message and I try to answer pretty quick. And you know, I, I, I love to help. I don't want anyone out there worried or struggling or feeling lost and abandoned. So um, I'm always happy to answer questions. All right. Anything else, Claire, before we go? I think we're good. I hope everybody has fun with their hats. Okay, have fun, happy holidays, and practice. That's when all the learning happens, is just when you're practicing. So, all right, have a good night. <laughs>